Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 59 of the Geek Heart Games Podcast, the only podcast that prohibits live tweeting of our podcast. Yes, that's right. If you're out there live tweeting movies, TV shows, or podcasts, don't do that. It's terrible. To be fair, if you're gonna if you're gonna tweet, you need to use the most common accepted hashtag for whatever it is you're tweeting, because people can mute that. You think hashtags are used for finding things? Hashtags are used for muting things. I have so many Game of Thrones and Avengers hashtags muted on our Twitter, so this stuff just doesn't show up, and it's fantastic. But there are some people who post about stuff and don't use the hashtag. And like when that shows up, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, you're getting muted for the time being uh, because I cannot risk that. I cannot risk the spoilers. And I hope once Game of Thrones is over and I've seen Avengers that there's like an easy way for me to look at our Twitter friends list and see who's muted so I can go back and unmute them. Otherwise, I'm not going to remember who I muted. It's just like, you know, it's just I can't help it. So uh, use your hashtags responsibly. Yes, that is all I have to say. Also, maybe just don't live tweet. Like, tweet afterwards. I mean, it's it's fine. As long you're as missing, there's a hashtag, you can mute. You're, you're missing, like, the you're, like, watching something, but then you're tweeting. You're just missing a lot of information that could be missed. That's all I'm saying. Well, you probably pause it while you do your tweet if you're responsible. Well, actually, like probably something. not, because if you're responsible, you're using the hashtag, and these people are not. So Yeah. So. I don't know, guys. I don't know what to tell you. But anyways, hey, we're a video game podcast. Sam, how you doing? Um, good. I don't think you introduced us. I don't think so. Hi, I'm Cody Tietrich, alongside my best friend, Sam Subak. Sam, how you doing? Hi. Um, I don't feel good tonight, so my energy level might not be appropriate for what I would want to bring. I'm going to do okay. my best. So. I mean, I think I, I have enough energy for the both of us, so you know. That's what she said. Yes. Yes, it is. All right. That's acceptable. So hey, what's up? See, I'm not that. Game? I'm not that sick. If I can still come up with a with a zinger like that. Yeah. So hey, Sam. Now here's something I, we need to talk about. You're not a big driving person in video games. So tell me, what are you doing playing dangerous driving? Cody, as you may or may not know. I loved Burnout Paradise. Did you ever oh, play that game? I did. Yes. God, it was a, it was a great game, it was right? A good one. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't recall if it made it into my top twenty five games of my life, but it was very close. If it didn't make it, like it was, is I have a lot of fun with that game. Okay, um, the people, some of the people who made Burnout Paradise made this dangerous driving game. Okay. Um, and, like, I've known it was coming for a while, and I was like, it's, you know, it'll be like Burnout Paradise, so I'm sure it'll be fun. And I think I want to get it. And when they had Burnout Paradise Remastered come out, Cody, it took every ounce of my self-control not to buy that remaster. Because yeah. I was like, you know what, I've got it on PS3, I don't need this remaster, I'm gonna wait for this other game to come out, it'll be the new game, it'll be great, I just, I should be responsible, right? Cody, I made a horrible mistake, okay? Okay. Yeah, so, like, I knew that this game wasn't gonna be, like, quite like Burnout Paradise, that's, I think that was pretty... I don't know if it was a $60 game when it came out, but it was like a real nice, Yeah, I'd say a AAA racing game. Yeah. As far as those go. Uh, this was, you know, this was not going to be that. This was $30. Um, but I was like, it's going to be fine. It'll be fun. So I got it. And it starts with one race. And you have to beat that race before the rest of the stuff opens up. And, like, it's not like an open world like Burnout Paradise was, which that was a big thing. You drove around, you found different races. There was always lots mm -hmm. of stuff to do. Always stuff to do. But this, it's like just this gate. You have to beat this first race in order to get to any of the other content. 
And you know, I don't like that because I'm not good at driving. Yeah. And just any time, like, what if you can't beat that race? Then you just can't play the rest of the game. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, I did it twice and, like, came in fourth place each time. And then the third time I came in first. So I got past it. Um, but, like, already I wasn't having much fun with it. And I then I realized it's because there's no music while you're racing the cars. It's just, like, car noises. And, like, that's not fun. Why? Yeah. I mean... It's it's not a triple A game. They can't afford the licensed music. But like I think thinking back on it, like having good tunes is what made Burnout Paradise so much fun. I think we both know that like you can go find some free music and You can find free music, you can. Yeah. You could have put some kind of Okay, oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here's the thing. So I was listening to What's Good Games and Andrew was talking about this. Apparently they have some deal with Spotify premium where they have a certain playlist that you're supposed to like play while you're playing the game. I That's I a terrible have, thing. I don't have Spotify Premium. I don't want to have to go deal with that. I just want to play the game. Because, yeah. I mean, I could play my own music while I'm playing if I wanted to. But it's just like, I was just like, oh, I was just so disappointed. And, like, it's just, I don't know. I played a couple, I played, like, the takedown race. And, I mean, it's, it's, the driving is fun. It feels like the burnout driving. Your takedowns feel fun the same way they were. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's just lacking that spark that makes it fun. And Cody, like right now, Burnout Paradise Remastered is on sale for five dollars. Holy shit, that's a good that's a good sale. And they've also said that in like the next six months or something, they're shutting down the servers for the previous generation. So like PS3, the yeah. online servers won't work anymore. So like I don't know. Like I feel like I'm gonna spend the five dollars and buy it just to have it seems like it'd be worth it it's five dollars i mean i've already pretty much thrown away thirty dollars so i don't know I'm, i guess you could uh you could say dangerous driving was a dangerous purchase it was cody mm -hmm. it was it was a, it was a bad idea so i don't know let that be a warning to you if you are interested at all in a fun driving game. Spend the five bucks and get Burnout Paradise Remastered. Honestly, it's on sale for five bucks like a lot recently. So really? hmm. okay. yeah, this sale will be over on Tuesday, so the day after the podcast. But like, it, it goes on sale a lot. And it's, I feel you'll have more fun with that. So Soundtrack's really good. So I mean, Soundtrack is so good, man. So I love Paradise City. I love that song. Yeah, it's a good uh, song. It's a good song. So, yeah. Learn from my mistakes, people. All right. Well, that was uh, dangerous driving. You were playing on PS4, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, hey. You live and you learn, right? All right. Yeah. So it's time for a returning segment. Sam, I, we didn't talk about this beforehand, so like, I don't expect you to have the music box on you, but can you possibly it. do? Can, can we get a little do 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 do? No, are you doing it or am I doing it? I was, I was asking. I was just asking. Let me do it. Okay, all right. Sure. All right. Do 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 do. Welcome. Actually, I, I thought for just a second Essentials. there you were going to come in with the accent on the song, and it was going to be really melodic. Oh. But I'm sorry. obviously we are so out of sync right now. So out of sync. That's all right. Hey. So okay. I'm talking briefly about Elder Scrolls Online because the beta for Elsewhere went live and I have watched so much footage. Yeah, I haven't played anything. It's all online for the PC nerd with your Turbo Tax and your Microsoft Excel. Anyways. Um, anyways, been watching. What if you could get Turbo Tax on your PS4? I mean, the... Uh, I don't know how that would work, to be honest with you. What if TurboTax made a video game that taught you how to do your taxes? That's what we should be teaching kids in schools. Any anyway, should be. Elder Scrolls Online. Closed beta for Elsewhere. Um, Sam, I am so excited for this to drop because, who man, I watched a ton of gameplay from the Necromancer class. Looks like a ton of fun. Uh, call me the Night King because I'm going to be raising all the dead. Um... That was really good. Was I'm really sorry, good. I'm having an issue, but uh, that was really good. Okay. Um, 
I'm really interested in the. So I was watching a couple people play, and they were just like wandering around the. Because uh, this is taking place in the Khajiit homeworld, um, and randomly, one guy was just walking through, and a dragon landed. And the dragon is pretty much like a raid boss, and like it's just out in the open world. And then like forty some people got together to kill this dragon, and like it seems like a ton of fun. Like I'm into it. Like this seems really cool. Um, I'm really excited to hop back into Elder Scrolls Online. I actually thought about playing last night, and I was like, and I started watching Hulu and like, yeah. Uh, but like, I'm kind of starting to miss that like world, and like this like I. Just, really just can't wait to be a necromancer like it's gonna be so cool like this dude do a flaming skull like like it's like a little like fireball but it's the skull and i was like yes and like oh man gonna be dope really excited for it that's all i have to say have you heard of the game dragon's dogma i've heard of it i've heard it's very good i've just never played it it's getting a lot of attention like i keep hearing everybody talking about it because i think it just came to switch um but it's, I believe, an MMORPG of a similar vein. Really? Hmm, okay. But I it's been it out a, for a while. I thought it was just an RPG. Okay. Cody, I could be wrong. I am only Maybe it 50% has, sure that it it's... May, it may have multiplayer. I'm not sure. I'm looking to... Because I have heard great things about it. And yeah. I want to know. So we're going to look into that. I'm not reliable. I make, I, mean, hey. I make bad decisions and I'm not reliable. I mean, I think you made a pretty good decision with your next game. You played Just Dance. And Just Dance is awesome. So Just, please tell me about it. Just Dance is awesome, Cody. Um, so I downloaded the, the demo on PS4 mm-hmm. a while back. And I was like, okay. Eventually I was like, I'm just going to try it out, you know? Um, and so it has these options. Like you can use the PlayStation camera to pick up your movement. Yeah. You, you could use a PS Move controller or you can use your cell phone. So I was like, these are really great options. Okay. Um, I was like, I'll just use the camera because like, I don't, know, I don't have a PS Move controller and like, I don't want to hold my phone. Um, so I got it and I did my little demo dance and I had a good time and then I finished it. And at the end, it plays back a video of you doing your dancing. And I was like, oh no. No, oh, you no. stop that right this now. This is not okay. No, no, sir. We are not doing this. Um, so then I was like, well, you know, I don't, I don't know that I care for this part of it. Uh, so then I was like, well, let me, let me try with this cell phone thing. So like you download this app and it just like uses, it tracks your movement with the phone. Uh, because here's the thing, like it really only tracks your, how your right arm is moving to know if you're mm, doing the dance right. Yeah. And let me say, it's just, it's pretty lenient. Like, well, I'll get into that in a minute. Um, so, but the thing about my phone is I have these gestures enabled. And so if I twist my phone two times fast like that, it opens the camera. So just right oh. away. So you don't have to unlock it. You don't have to pull it up. So if there's a photo op, like you're like, oh, I'm ready. Just like, let me twist the camera and it's good to go. Um, but when you're dancing, uh, that the camera kept coming up and interrupting the app. So that was a no go for me. Uh, but then I was like, oh, like you can get it on Switch as well. So I was like, let me download a demo on Switch. So I did that. And you just use the Joy-Con in your right hand and do your dance. And I was like, this is this is A-OK. I like this one a lot. So I was like, I think I want to get one of the games on Switch. Um, but I didn't know which one to get because like like they go each year. They have a version. Yeah. And like I looked at all the track lists for each one and like I only knew a few songs off of each one because I'm like, because you know, I'm not hip. Um, So let me tell you what I did, Cody. I put out a Twitter poll and it was like asking people to help me out. I'm like, Hey people, like what, uh, which one of these has the best music? And I listed them. And let me tell you what, Cody, Twitter was a major disappointment. Everybody on the internet let me down because do you know how many people voted in my poll? How many, Sam? Not a one, Cody. Nobody voted in my poll at all. Uh, Groon went ahead and posted none of them, which was not helpful, Groon. I did not appreciate that. And I did not appreciate the whole internet ignoring my poll because I needed advice, people, and you let me down. So 
All right. So I was like, I don't know what to do. Uh, but then Best Buy had a sale and Just Dance 2019, normally $40, was half price. So I give it for oh, 20 bucks. Okay. I'm like, well, that makes my decision. So I'm going to get that yeah. one. Uh, so I got it. And I was like, okay, this is fun, you know. I danced to, like, the few songs that I knew. Uh, and then it's like, hey, uh, you get a free month of our Just Dance Unlimited, which is a subscription, and you you get access to any song that has ever been in a Just Dance game. Oh, so I was like, oh, yeah. I'm intrigued by games. that. Yeah, so there's, like, hundreds of songs. So I'm, I'm using my free trial right now, and I just went through and, like, added every song that I knew to a playlist. So I've got, like, a three-hour playlist now, so I can just put it on shuffle and, like, play my songs that I know. And uh, it's only $25 a year for the Unlimited, which, you know, I figure I would have paid $40 for the game full price, so this is only, like, an extra $5 to get a year of it uh but they i mean you are hooked in and like you know once they get you like you're never gonna like not want to have your unlimited songs again so we'll see what happens but i'm enjoying it right now um i'm having a lot of fun like i said it's it's very lenient as far as like how well you do the movements because like you know i've got my fitness boxing with the with the switch remotes and like it's it's a stickler like you really got to get it just right and like overemphasize stuff uh, just dance is, is pretty like just like yeah you're, you're trying you're doing a good job yeah you're great um so you get like star rankings for how well you're doing and like each time you do a move it'll be like okay or like you did great or super or perfect um so you want to get those and like five stars is the most you can get but then if you get the five stars and you still do a little bit better the stars turn blue and you get a superstar rating. So I've gotten that a time or two, Cody, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, oh, I forgot the whole, mostly the whole point of this story, what I was going to tell you. Um, so the unlimited, you know, I told you I picked my songs, I got my playlist, whatever. And I was like, oh, am I going to have to like download all this stuff so that I can play it? Cody. Uh, Unlimited is streaming, apparently. You know, we talked about Google Stadia and how you're going to be streaming your video games in the future. Apparently, we're streaming our video games right now. Didn't even know it. Well, I knew it because as I did these Unlimited songs, like it was it was real pixelated at first. So, like there's some buffering. Sometimes it would pause. I was, in fact, downloading something on my PC at the time also. Uh, so once I stopped that, it got a lot better. Um, but like sometimes I'll, I'll start my unlimited song and they'll be like, it'll, it'll take it like a few seconds to like get the buffering situation fixed up. Um, which is kind of like weird and frustrating. Like it's not perfect yet, but like, I kind of like it because like, I didn't have to download all that stuff. Yeah. Like I just stream it and like, once it gets going, it's, it's pretty good quality and it's, it's fine. Um, so like, who knew? Like there could be other game stuff that's partially streaming that we don't even know about you know yeah like what if i'm not really here this is just a stream of me from the future that's interesting how that would work because how would you know like what to say at the right time tacos I'm oh sorry. my god, there were tacos at lunch today? Because, uh, like, I was telling you, well, so when we have a special event, like, they cater in lunch for some people, not me, because I'm not part of the special people. But then after lunch, if there's leftovers, they, like, go put them out for everybody. And uh, apparently there were, like, a shit ton of leftover tacos, which I walked by at, like, 2 o'clock, and I'm like, I don't... I mean, usually I eat stuff that's been out, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. But I was like, I just, I just don't know about these tacos that have been out for... Multiple hours. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I can talk about when it's fresh. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't so even you're, know. So, real quick, are you using, you said you're using the camera, the PlayStation camera, or are you using no. your phone? No. No, none of the above now. I'm on the Switch, so I just have one Switch, on Switch Joy-Con yeah, okay. in my hand, in my right hand. So, it's nice. I kind of want to get a Just Dance game now. Are you talking um, about this? Because we used to have like a Just Dance on the Wii that like me and my niece would play, and like I loved it. So. You can go download the free demo right now and try it out and see if you like it. Um, I like it. It's fun. So it might be like a little nice workout thing. When, when oh, oh my, my God, Cody. Cody, it is such a hard workout. Okay? Really? okay. Like, yes. I don't even understand why. Because, you know, I do Zumba like once a week and it's an hour. 
And like, I'm fine, you know, like I'll get sweaty. I'll get like kind of worn out by the end, but I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I can do it. I don't know. This just dance, man. I do like 30 minutes of dancing on it and I'm just exhausted. This is like wearing me out. Like, I don't even know. Cause I mean, partially I'm probably just working harder. Cause like, I don't know what moves are coming up and I'm like jumping around trying to keep up with it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a workout. So but yeah, it's fun too. Okay, well, that was just dance 2019, right? Was it? Yeah. Okay. Please. See, because like the WWE games, like at the N- mm. NFL games are all like 2K or whatever. And I'm like, ah, I just don't fucking know what these like, these yearly titles are anymore. Well, in like this whole Just Dance Unlimited business, I'm like, so when they come out with Just Dance 2020, like, will I get access to those songs or would I have to buy the new one to get mm. the new ones? It's like, yeah. hmm, I don't know. Wonder. Wonder. Hmm. Because we'll find out if you get uh, 2021. I guess we will. <laughs> I don't know yeah. any of those songs that we find. Oh, God. It's probably, it's probably, I don't know probably any of them either. So, All right. Well, that was just dance. Uh, so, about to spoil the shit out of everything. We're talking about the end game. Well, did you put up your hashtag so people can mute it? Uh, hashtag end game. We're talking about it. Yep. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. You're talking about a different endgame. Oh, sorry. Not not that endgame. I'm talking okay. about the Division 2's endgame. All right. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jokes. I thought uh. you were talking about, like, there's stuff in the Division 2's endgame that's, like, spoilery. Oh, I, I didn't mean, under- little, I didn't understand right. the joke. I'm really slow today. <laughs> so, last we talked, I was, uh, I think, level 28, and so I need to hit the end, like, level 30. Um, so, like, I am going to... St- Spoil stuff for the end of the Division 2's story. Because I hear that story is super important and real intriguing. And, um, like, you definitely and don't I'm going to talk spoiled. about what takes place after you finish the story. So if you don't want to know any of that, please steer clear of this conversation for the next 10 minutes. Um, <clears throat> so I thought when I hit level 30, I thought everything I read online said I get a cutscene. That's, like, going to show... Because before the game even came out, we knew that there's this other group of, like like another group out there who like hunts division agents and like they show up when you get to the end game. So I was like, Oh, Hey, hit level 30. That's when it happens. No, you have to finish the story, which requires you to do all three strongholds that are originally launched with the game. This is not funny anymore, but like when you said there's another group hunting the division, I was trying to think of something funny to say, like that would be the opposite of the division. And all I could come up with is the multiplication. I, if you had not come up with the notification, I would have been very disappointed in you. So, thank you. Um, so, I went through and did that. Um, and so, once you beat the last stronghold, which is you taking back the Capitol Hill building in Washington, D.C., uh, a cutscene plays, and it's like, oh, like your, your people back at the White House are celebrating, like shooting off fireworks, everything's good. And then, boom, the Black Tusk arrives. And there are these elite agents who are here to kill you. And like, are they former division agents who went rogue? I think they're like former mercenaries that were hired by the government. So okay, ooh. um, and like it's not like oh they show up and like they're just fucking with the division agents. No, they show up and like the other three groups that are already in the game you've been fighting against the entire time are all like in a fucking panic because these dudes show up and they're fucking tough as nails. They got mini guns, tough as tusks. Oh, Thomas Tusks. Uh, they got miniguns. Uh, they got these little, like, dog robot creatures that will run around. And, like, some have snipers on their backs. And some have, like, <laughs> healing things. But, like, no matter what, if you destroy them, they set out an EMP. And then you can't use your abilities. And it's like, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> they got, like, portable EMPs that they can throw. They got this, like, grenade that they throw. And, like, it lands near you. You have to be, like, really paying attention to see it. Because, like, it's like this little, like, red field comes off of it. And, like, if you're in, in that red field, it's eating away at your armor so mm-hmm. quickly. And it'll kill you before you even know it. And, like, it's happened to me before. I was like, oh, shit. Um, it's like, like and, like, their their AI is just very different than any of the other groups you've been mm-hmm. fighting. And, like, it's a nice change of pace. Because you're like, oh, like, you're used to this other stuff. Like, you know what's going to happen with the other three groups. And so, yeah. Um, and so once you hit the end game, like, once you hit level 30, and once you, like, finish the story, everything switches into gear score. And you have to get a certain gear score to go do this. And you start having invaded missions where, like, the Black Tusk, like, go in and, like, they've taken over previous story missions you've done. And now you have to go through them again, but with the Black Tusk instead. And so, like, it's a different scenario. 
Um, and that's really nice. I like that. And like, there's usually there was two missions tied to a stronghold, and then you have to do an invaded stronghold with the Black Tusk. So it's the stronghold that you had to do for the story, but now the Black Tusks are there. Um, and it's a nice little thing. And like, so each time you go through a stronghold, uh, you go up a they call it world tier. So like, oh. you go through the first one, you get to world tier one. Then you go through the second one, world tier two, so on and so forth. And like each time you have to like hit a certain gear score before they'll even let you do the stronghold because they want you to be the appropriate level. Um, and like I like that. I think that's a good way to do it because like in the Destiny with light level, like the only kind of thing we have like that is like oh like you can get to this point, but like if you really want to keep going, like you need to go do the raid. Like that's how you can like get a lot of gear to hit like the max level. Whereas in this, it's like no, like, you gotta do all, you gotta go through the stages. Mm-hmm. Um, and so currently the highest tier is world tier five and you do that by going through those strongholds and then once you hit world tier four uh, that's when you get introduced to the new stronghold that they only introduced like two weeks ago called tidal basin uh, and like this is one you've never done before it's brand new it's all about the black tusk uh, and like how they have rockets that they're going to shoot at the white house um, and this is apparently like a precursor to the raid that's coming uh, next month and like I really enjoy that stronghold because, like, it's taking place on a helicarrier, pretty much. Like, oh. think of, like, shield helicarrier. Yeah. But, like, not a, Yeah, like, it's, like, on that. Um, and it was really fun. Like, I don't know, like... The so boss, you're up in the air? It hasn't taken off yet. Oh, okay. But, like, you, you can see what's going on with it. Okay, um, I just want to know if you could accidentally back off the edge and kill yourself. Because uh, no, that would be that. the thing I need to worry about. <laughs> none of that. Um... And so yeah, and I got this much I need to talk about. Uh, so everything like and like they're kind of like the story's there. It's not like it's not compelling. You're still just kind of like <laughs> doing stuff. That's, um, that's what I heard. Yeah, and I mean I'm liking it. Like I like I'm loving playing the division. I think it's really cool. So right now I'm in World Tier Five. I did everything, uh, and so right now the only thing I can really do is progress to like five hundred. Um, the highest you can get in the game right now is like 515 gear score and the way to get pat like once you hit 500 the only way to get to 515 is you can go into the occupied dark zones which if you don't know what the dark zones are they're like massive pve versus player areas where like you go in and like you can like kill npcs for loot and stuff uh, but there are also enemy players running around who can kill you and get your loot um, and like the entire point is like get loot from that and like extracted all that um and like i'm not very interested in that right now like i wanted to eventually try it but that's not something i care about i'm just really trying to hit 500 um so i'm like 450 gear score right now um definitely once you hit like 450 ish i've noticed it gets a little harder to like because before gear was just dropping like crazy yeah. that were upgrades for me now it's like and even like the game even pops up at this point it's like hey you're approaching max gear score now it's more about like your builds and like mm-hmm. what perks are on the weapons and what perks are on the armor that you're using. And I was like, okay, like I'm fine with that. Like that makes sense. Like you want to like, you don't want to be running around with like, oh, hey, I got like plus 20% LMG damage. I just use sniper rifles and shotguns. What the fuck is this doing for me? You want to be able to like, mm-hmm. you want to have something that's going to like complement the way you play. Um, and another cool thing with that is once you hit level 30 and finish the story, uh, these specializations open up and like they're an entirely new skill tree and there are currently only three, but they're going to keep unlocking more. Um, I think the next one is actually a mini gun specialization, but currently we have the demolitionist, which gets a grenade launcher as like a super weapon. Uh, the survivalist, which gets a crossbow with uh, explosive tips. And <laughs> all right, the second I said, it. and then a sharpshooter, which gets like a uh, Barrett 50 cal sniper. Um, so when I first like hit, like, I got to the point where I could get specializations. I went with the Demolitionist because I was like, oh, a grenade launcher. And I use LMGs and, like, because each one has, like, things they're good at. And, like, I was using LMGs for a while and I was like, yeah, like, I want to be able to do a bunch of, like, like LMGs can just spray and pray and, like, really, like, take out a lot of armor on, like, these elites and these bosses. And I was like, that's the kind of, like, what I wanted to play at that time. So that's what I went with. And then, like, I was kind of like, I was like, oh, like, I really like the assault rifles in this game. Like, I think the assault rifles are very strong. Like, they're very accurate. Uh, and, like, they just do a lot of damage. So I was like, well, I think I want to, like, change over to the survivalists because, like, they have a bunch of perks that increase, like, assault rifle damage and stuff like that. They're also kind of, like, the, like, healer spec. 
And I was like, and like, I like using this drone, which will like, I can send to people that'll heal people. I like using that. Um, I feel like the survivalist should have a special that's a sh- shovel. It's a shovel. It pulls out a shovel and starts whacking people. I mean, that's how I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Too. Like, okay. that's what I think I of when I think saying. of survivalist. Um, it's like a crossbow? That doesn't sound as interesting. I mean, I will say the crossbow is pretty fucking cool. Uh, I yeah. just think the, like, I think the issue is the demolitionist, uh, like, the grenade launcher is very strong. The survivalist and the sharpshooters, like, special weapons, like, I think they should just do more. Like the Barrett fifty cal sniper, I think like should go should be able to shoot through walls because like in real life a Barrett fifty cal sniper will shoot through walls, and I think the survivalist really should do more damage to armor with the explosive crossbow because it does some decent damage, but it could do more, you know. Yeah. Uh, like the grenade launcher, like you shoot it at a group of enemies and like they're just fucking dead. Um, uh, as I'm liking the survivalist, like I'm like focusing on my assault rifles, I get an incendiary grenade. And I really like lighting people on fire in this game because, like, it stuns them. Like, they're just like, ah, shit, what do I do? <laughs> um, and then, like, I have a perk where, like, my teammates deal more damage to people who have status effects. So I'm yeah. throwing fire grenades in. They're on fire. My teammates are destroying them. So, like, hell yeah. Um, and then, like, I get more, like, healing, like, outgoing healing. So, like, I use my drone. Like, if someone's, like, on the verge of death, I can send the drone to them. Drone heals them, like, instantly. And like, I'm really enjoying that play style right now. I think that's what I'm going to want to play, like, if I do end up doing the raid. That the only issue I'm having right now is, like, right now I'm playing with Andy and his friend Steve. It's, like, just the three of us we've been playing. And, like, there's a lot of people out there. Uh, but, like, getting eight people together coordinated to do this raid may be a challenge. Well, you need to get with Cam from the Optional oh, Podcast. Because yes. he's been playing it. Um, and I'm sure, like... Because he's talked like he's got some friends, but I think if you guys like pooled your forces, yeah. maybe you get enough for doing it. But uh, I'm really enjoying the end game of the division. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm like just starting to look at the exotics that you can go and like work for. Like uh, there's like an SMG uh, I really want to get. Uh, the one I really want is this. It's a, a rifle and it's got a perk on it. When you holster it, the other gun you're shooting has a 20% chance that a bullet will deal explosive damage. And, like, it's a lot of damage. And, like... That's nice. If I'm using an LMG or an assault rifle, I'm pumping out a lot of bullets. So, like, there's a good chance that yeah. one of those bullets will have the 20% extra damage. So, I'm looking forward to that. And then there's a exotic sniper that just dropped with Tidal Basin. I really like the snipers in this game, so I'm definitely going to be looking forward to getting that. But yeah, I'm just really loving the Division 2. You know, it's a lot of fun. Um, I definitely recommend it. I think it was on sale somewhere recently. Um, like right now, I don't know if it'll still be when the podcast comes out, but I think like on Amazon and Walmart, it was like about $10 off or maybe yeah. $13. 12 so to $13 perhaps. If uh, you're into these kind of tactical shooters, um, I definitely would recommend it as always. I probably will be talking about it for the rest of the year at this point. Um, yeah, Division 2, the end game. Really good. Can I say one thing that you reminded me of this and it's from like many episodes ago. So you just talked about how like your incendiary grenades are lighting people on fire and like they go into, they get stunned because, oh my goodness, I'm on fire. Um, I think I forgot to mention it when I was talking about Far Cry 5 long ago. Like, oh. you know, you can get your, your uh, Timber the dog and then you get the, um, warthog or boar or whatever he is i forgot his name uh and you know accidentally sometimes they would catch on fire but oh. whenever they did they would stop drop and roll because they oh. were really smart and it was very nice because sometimes like i was the one responsible for accidentally setting them on fire Same. um i felt real bad about it but they're they're real good animals and they just put themselves out so it just made me think of that okay i mean hey well hey speaking of animals hey Sam has been playing Falcon Age, which just released a week ago, about um, two, weeks been, ago. two weeks ago. Sorry, uh, two, two weeks, weeks ago. Yeah, yeah when it was released. We, we missed a week. Yeah. Um, so Sam, tell me about Falcon Age. Looks like a really cool game. Oh my god, it's so fucking adorable, Cody. Uh, you get this little falcon. Although I don't actually know what baby falcons look like in real life, but this baby falcon. It just like looks like a little baby owl to me, like just the way it's like mm, kind of fluffy that. neck and stuff. It doesn't seem as raptorish. Um, 
but it's adorable, okay? And then it grows up and it's a big adult falcon looking like a badass raptor, obviously. Um, but the fun thing that the game does, like you get little outfits you can put on the falcon. And one of them is, I think it's just like the baby hat. And so you put the hat on it and it goes back to being the baby falcon. So it even when the story progresses, like you, you can have it be the baby or the adult whenever you want. Um, and yes. Question. Um, so... Just to, for clarification, we're not actually, like, it's actually a falcon, right? It's not Anthony Mackie sitting on your arm, correct? Well, um, there's a mod that you can get for it that will turn him, actually, no. It would be pretty <laughs> cool if they, because they just released some updates with some new hats and stuff for the bird. It'd be pretty cool if they did release, like, a, a little hat that would, like, make him make him look like Anthony Mackie. That would be, that'd be pretty, I'm sorry, she. Actually, your falcon is a she. Oh, shit, all right. Well, yeah. Um, and like, I kind of put off starting the game for a little bit. Cause I was like, I just like, I felt like I was going to need to name my Falcon and I wanted it to be something like important and majestic. And I was like, oh, um, and then like, I got to the point and really it turns out you just like pick the name from like a list of four or five options. So you don't actually get to name the bird like yourself. And yeah. then like never, never again in the game do they reference that bird's name. It's just like for you to know. So, but it's fine. Um, so the game was built originally to be played in VR, uh, but it can also be played fully uh, outside of VR. And uh, so I started out in the VR. I was like, hey, let's try it out. So it's like, it's pretty cool. Like, I don't, like I said, I don't have PS Move controllers, so I'm just using the DualShock. But it'd probably be cooler if you had the Move and you could just like lift your arm up and like see the bird right there on your arm. But, uh, but it's still pretty cool regardless. Uh, the first part is kind of boring though, because like you're in a colonial prison i guess and you gotta like go out and break rocks and then go for reconditioning and stuff uh and then spoiler alert like the first five minutes of the game uh the way you get this falcon is uh mama falcon dies tragically so uh so that's how you end up getting the falcon and you raise like it motherfucking you, bambi all over again, fucking right? bambi man seriously um but yeah, so you're raising it, you're teaching it to go, It'll you can direct it, it'll go fly off and pick, like, fruit and stuff and bring it back to you. Uh, later you can direct it to go, like, attack enemies for you. So it's pretty cool. It helps you escape from this little prison area. And the VR was good because, like, it didn't make me get motion sickness at all. Because, like, you're not, you're not doing the traditional walking. What you do is, like, kind of look and, like, point and you'll see, like, a little... Like, thing pointing, like, okay, you want to go over here? And then you let go, and, like, you'll teleport over there. Um, but, like, you you have to, like, position, like, where you're going to go, but then also somehow position, like, which way you're going to be facing once you get done teleporting. And for some reason, I had a lot of trouble with this. Like, I could mm -hmm. not master it, and I would always end up, like, teleporting and then, like, facing the wall and, like, trying to, like, figure out how to turn around. Um, and I feel like that would be really difficult once you get into combat, like, I don't know how, cause you know, you gotta, you gotta bob and weave a bit when you're, when you're fighting. So, uh, so I didn't, I didn't stick with the VR for very long, but I still had a great time without the VR. I played through the whole game. Uh, it's probably about maybe five or six hours. Um, and so you're just like, you go around, you're gathering different resources, you're hunting animals, which I mean, I felt bad cause like, my falcon would go and like kill a rabbit and like it would make this like horrible dying sound and then I'd go and look at its dead body and it would like kind of look like a cat and I was just like oh dear it's like this is like the reverse like the birds are getting their revenge on Aloy for everything and it's just like oh but like you know the falcon's got to do what the falcon's got to do uh, no it's not to, no it's a bird of prey Cody yeah. So it preys on things. Um, all right, so that, it just it happens. It's fine. It's fine. Um, you're hunting. Okay, so basically, uh, colonizers have taken over the world. Like, there's real political themes here about yeah. like losing your cultural identity uh, because, like, you know, they're trying to get you to assimilate to what they want and stuff. And so you're rebelling and you're fighting against them and like reclaiming. Um, just stations, I forget what they're called, uh, and just going through and doing that. There's, like, family stuff, too, because, like, you meet up with your aunt, who has also been 
a falconer. And so she's kind of teaching you how to respect the bird and like do different stuff. And it's, it's cool. Um, I had a lot of fun with it. Just the bird is cute. Uh, you do these like fun interactions where like you can pet it, you can fist bump, you can do like the little heart and it'll like fly in there and, and be all cute. And then once you like get to the vendor, you can get different outfits for the bird and like get little hats. And then like when you do little side quests, people will give you little presents for the bird. So like you get a little skateboard and it'll like do a little trick with the skateboard. Or like there was this juggler who gave you like one of those things where it's like you have to like, I don't know, move the stick and like move the ball around yeah. on the stick. And like it'll do a little trick with that. Um, so it can do some really fun little things. Um, and then it's... I. <laughs> I just had a good time with it. This is, yeah. it wasn't a small map, but it was like, it seemed like just the right size. Like Melissa was playing it and she was complaining that like she was getting lost or maybe Megs was getting lost. One of them was getting lost a lot, but like, I was feeling like, man, this is like, I like got this game. Like I got it. And like, I was, I was always pretty sure how to like get back and forth between areas. So I didn't have much of a problem with that. Um, I did. There's, so you get this weapon, so you've got this little like electric baton that you can hit things with, and then later you get an upgrade where it kind of turns into a little whip, uh, so you can like attack from a distance, and so that the different uh, enemies, it depends on how you fight, so it's like, you know, it's, it's cool. Um, I enjoyed the combat with it, because like, you know, you get your bird to attack at just the right time, and then you do your stuff at just the right time. Um, the bird can also, there are these like spider robots that come at you, of course it's spiders always. Um, <laughs> And you can get your bird to attack it. Like she trained to do hunting, you know, rabbits. Mm. So she'll attack the spider. And then you can direct her to go throw it down at the facility that's shooting out the spider bots. And she'll like do it like a bomb and she'll explode it. So that's pretty cool. There's cool things she can do. Um, but yeah, uh, there's this... I was playing through and then I was like, you know, let me just check, like, see what the trophies look like. And, like, it didn't look too hard to get all this stuff. But there's this one, like, mini game thing that's there that's um, your electric whip. It's an electric whip golf. And so, like, you've got this ball and you have to, like, whip the ball and, like, shoot it to, like, get in the hole. I know. Huh? That's, that's what she said. <laughs> yeah. Um... And I was like, this is some bullshit because I do not have good control of this whip and my ball was going everywhere except the hole. Uh, so you were having trouble getting your balls into the hole, you saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, I'm not very skilled with that. Yeah. And I was real pissed that there was a trophy because you have to shoot par on the golf course in order to do this. And I'm like, this is going to be a disaster because, um, like, I just... I, I don't know the proper technique, but did I didn't you, have it. Did you seek help? Did you consult with maybe a doctor on how to get your balls to fit into the hole? No, I was a little embarrassed about it. I oh, didn't okay. I didn't want to talk about it with strangers. Um, but yeah, so I, I kept like just doing it to like, so I'm like, I want this fucking trophy, right? And one time, Cody, I got a hole in one, if you believe it. Oh, hey. Yeah, yeah. Blew me away. Um... But yeah, it probably, took me probably, probably the whole way too. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it probably took me like less than ten tries, and I eventually did the whole course. I hit par, and I was very proud, and I got my trophy. Um, Good job. So, so I ended up platinuming, platinuming the game. It's a real easy platinum to get if you can do that golf. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just fun. It's it's. I will say I didn't really care for the end of the game because you get you get there and it just seems a little bit abrupt and a little bit like, huh, oh, okay, I guess that's okay. It's like maybe, maybe they just needed a stopping point. Okay. Falcon Age 2. Maybe, which would be cool. Also, let me say this is $20. So this is an indie game. It comes with VR. It comes with regular playing. I think it's only on PlayStation right now. Um, but it's a lot of fun and it's cute and it's not, a, it's not a long one. Like I said, it only takes about five hours or so. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're interested and just want some, I mean, it's pretty lighthearted, even though there's combat and stuff and killing poor rodents. Um, 
there was a glitch. I got really mad at this glitch, okay? Because, like, you gather ingredients, like, you hunt the animals, you get the fruits and stuff, and you can cook up different uh, food for your for your bird to, like, either heal or to, like, boost defense or different stuff like that. Um, there's a, There was this one thing that you're supposed to... Because you get recipe cards, so you know what mm-hmm. to make. And there's one recipe where you use three green fruits, and it makes this, like green bun that gives 25% health, right? Okay. Then there's this one where you get like one chameleon tail and then two green fruits, and it's supposed to make a bun that's 50% health, right? Which is the good one. I don't know what happened. Like, so I swear I made it like once, but every time after when I tried to do the one that was one chameleon tail and two green fruit, it would like make the bun that was like I had just done the three green fruit and I only got the 25% health bun. And I was real mad. I'm like, I don't understand why this is happening. I went to different food processors around the map and tried like different ones, but it didn't work anywhere. And I don't know. But I mean, it didn't really matter because like I pretty much always had enough food for for my bird from other stuff um and like i said it's you know this little indie game a little glitch here and there isn't isn't bad but oh i did have a glitch also where the bird was just like bouncing on the ground and like it wouldn't stop i was like what happened uh luckily i think i had the baby bird hat on it so i went into my inventory and took it off because you can take it off um mm. when they're not when the bird isn't with you uh so i took it off and it became uh, adult bird and then it was okay i was like okay that was that was weird though was, right. so but yeah falcon age is a good time i recommend it it's a good choice so i was gonna say uh the glowing review from geek Art games is falcon age get your balls into the hole get a platinum <laughs> pretty much <laughs> yeah so falcon age um all right well, we got a little bit of news to touch on you know kind of missed a week so we got some stuff we want to talk about a very big one for sam here very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, she's all kinds of hyped, but also kind of sad because we'll talk about something else in a second. Um, they announced a Star Wars celebration. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Dun, 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 dun. I feel like you would have done the Star Wars theme there, but that's fine. Off the top of my head, couldn't tell you what the Star Wars theme is. Dun, 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 dun. Nice. Good job, Sam. Good job. So yeah, this is the uh, respawn. Cody, I feel like I'm so sorry. You, I feel like there's just like this one really long beard hair that's like sticking out from the others, and it's like glistening in the sun. I don't know. It's weird. You know, do its thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I think right. you got a group now. Good job. So this is the uh, Star Wars game, single player only from respawn. Uh, no mm-hmm. microtransactions. As a proudly told us uh and they gave us a trailer and it's a pretty good trailer um mm-hmm. now i haven't read any synopsis so this is just me saying what i've seen from the trailer uh so it seems like we're gonna be following a uh a jedi knight maybe um who well, this is after episode three i would assume yeah he didn't become a full jedi yet he okay. was still a padawan when it happens okay uh, and it's kind of just like him trying to like live an ordinary life, but then like he ends up having to use his Jedi powers. And when he does, the Sith come for him. And a really cool thing is one of the Sith is actually from the comic books. Uh, I want to say Kieran Gillen created this character in his last Darth Vader run. I want to say. That's what I read on I, the Twitter. Well, the Inquisitors, I know, are from the comic books. Yeah. And then, I like, think they called her the second sister. One yes, I want to say her. She is yeah. from the Darth Vader comic book run. Yeah, that's where she was originally created, and that's really cool. Like I was like, oh, yeah, they're you know they're going to their kind of now extended universe, so that's really cool. Yeah, well, like the people making the game and then the people making the comic books were like talking with each other and working together with it, so that's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if there's there was was there any details released about like what kind of like it's obviously it's an RPG, but like. Top down, like third person. What are we talking? About? Oh yeah, it's it's gonna be third person, like okay. action, like melee fighting. With yeah. you're gonna be using a lightsaber, and then you're also gonna be using force powers. Um, so we didn't we didn't actually see gameplay, although like the trailer they said it was rendered with the in game uh, assets. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And like there was something where you clearly saw some wall running like you might see oh, in Titanfall yes. 2. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah. Okay. Cool. Another big thing is that this is not being used. Frostbite is not being used for this. It's Correct. A, uh, I forget it? what they said. Was it Unreal Engine? I don't think it was Unreal Engine. I feel like maybe it was. I feel like maybe it was. I don't okay. know, but it's not the Frostbite. The thing is they're not using Frostbite. Engine. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's, so it's, it's EA fine. is very like, use our Frostbite engine, but like it's not yeah. good for these kind of things. I, so. I don't know. I feel like Respawn just like for some reason gets to operate outside of the rules a yeah. lot and just make, make good stuff, which is awesome. Yeah. Um so yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about this. This looks cool because like, uh, so okay, so before they showed the trailer, it was just the people like sitting around talking. They're like, yeah, we've got an hour, you know. So I figured, oh okay, it's gonna be one of those where they show it at the very end of the hour. But they'd only talked for like ten or fifteen minutes, and they're like, you know, like let's just get to cut to the chase. You guys want to watch the trailer? Let's watch the trailer, um, which was really cool. But and so they were, they were saying. Uh, they told us about the main character's name, Cal, and like he used, he was a Padawan. He's trying to keep his powers a secret because the Empire is hunting any Jedi that got away. Um, and so he's just trying to like play it cool and, you know, live his life. Um, and so like when they said that and they said his name, like for some reason, like the only Cal like I know of really is Cal Penn from, uh, you know, like how Howard and Kumar go to White Castle, oh, like that, that yeah. guy. And so like, I don't know, like that's what I was picturing in my, in my mind. And so when the trailer starts and it's like, it's just a, it's a white guy. I was like, Oh, so like I had a little bit of disappointment just from the get go that like, like that's who our lead is just cause like the star Wars universe is so, so wide, you know, there could be all kinds of aliens. There could be all kinds of races and like, you know, we've got another white guy lead, but that's fine. It was just like a little thing that got to me right at the beginning when that happened. But uh, the actor is, Oh, shoot. I don't know his name. Cameron something, who is, I guess, on Gotham, and he was in Shameless. And I really liked him in Shameless. And so he seems to... he seemed, I, I liked what I saw of him in the trailer, and I think he'll do a good job. Uh, the guy who plays Jerome in Gotham? I, 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 I haven't really seen Gotham. I just said what other people said. Okay. I don't really know who he is in Gotham. Huh. All right. Continue. Sorry. So, uh, but yeah, so... He's going, you know, oopsie, uses power, uh, the Empire's after him, so he's on the run, and uh, he meets meets up with some people, but a lot, like, the whole time, he's got BD-1, which is his little droid, which is, I'd say, like, a, a little dog-sized, possibly kind of dog-shaped uh, droid, and... Um, like then when they were talking about the story, they were like kind of likened it to a boy and his dog. And apparently BD1 actually stands for Buddy Droid 1 because he's this little buddy, which is so sweet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so like you see him together and like I'm excited to see their interactions. And then like fucking the, the Inquisitor looks really cool. And then they've got these special... Purge Troopers, which are the new kind of stormtroopers, which I think might have also come from the comics. I could be wrong, um, but they look pretty cool. So I'm just I'm excited to see where it goes. Now I've heard people talking about this, and they're like, "Yeah, it's cool and all, but like no, having stuff that takes place in the middle of the timeline, like you kind of like know." that nothing's like significant's gonna happen because like where would this character be? when the other movies happened, like why, if they were still around doing stuff, why wouldn't they have been there, you know? And I'm like, okay, like, yeah, I can see that, but... I, I agree with that. You know, like, he could be like, in hiding, he could be doing other stuff, regardless. It's an entire galaxy. It's a like, galaxy, yeah. Luke Skywalker and Homeboy aren't gonna hang out, like, that's... <laughs> what? Okay. Okay, but it got me thinking, okay? I'm like, what, what, what could be, like, the neat story that they tell that, like, we wouldn't be expecting? Um... And I was just like, it just came to me. Like, I don't think this is what's going to happen, but it would be pretty cool if it were, right? So do you remember when Battlefield 2 was going to come out and we were like, oh, this is the story like we've been waiting for. It's someone from the dark side. We're like going to see that side of the story, right? And then it didn't really deliver on it the way that we hoped. But like, what if, what if we're following Cal on this journey and like, you know, he's this wholesome, earnest gonna be a jedi guy he's going he's got to do stuff to survive what if the, he transitions 
through the game and you get to the end and like, he's gone full dark. Like, what if that's where they go with this? We would never expect it, right? That'd be pretty interesting. That would be pretty interesting. I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't also, think they will. Battlefront 2. You said Battlefield 2. God damn it. Those yeah. fucking you said that, battle and I was games. Like, Wait, what? You knew yeah. what I was talking about, people. I did. Come I on. Did. I can't help it. Not you. I knew you knew what I was talking about. Other people, they knew. They understood. It's. Yeah, I'm pretty nice. excited for this. Um, I definitely want to see some gameplay. Just I uh, want to know what, like, what's like, how's it going to play and all that. Like the wall I'm running. I'm giving my cool. money right now. Reasonable, yeah, understandable. Um, we should say that there's some other news coming. Hold on, out real respawn. quick. Uh, they also said the release date, which is November fifteenth. So it's coming out later this year in time for the holidays. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm excited for it. Don't, don't get me wrong. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know what it looks like. It's all. Um, That's what she said. Sure. Orky, you know. Either way. See what works either with. way. Um, yeah. All right. You want to give your bad news now? All right. Sam, you want to just take the earphones off for a little bit? No, it's fine. Uh, I can handle it. So Respawn came out and we're doing kind of like an update, like, hey, state of the game for Apex Legends. And they revealed today that Titanfall 3 has been delayed so that they can put full work into Apex Legends. Uh, I think they kind of realized how many people are playing the game and how they want to support that right now. Uh, but they, I think they did say like they are, like Titanfall 3 will eventually get made. Just right now it is not the focus. Apex Legends is. Which makes sense. Like you release a game, it's really popular, like over 500 million people playing it. Like you want to support that. Um, but uh, it does suck that, you know, Titanfall 3 has to take a, take a bullet on this one. So... To be fair, if we want to look at this another way, when Apex Legends first came out, we were like, oh, I guess we're not getting Titanfall right now. And they pretty much said that they weren't working on Titanfall. They didn't really give any indication about it. So now they're at least addressing that, hey, Titanfall 3 is a thing that we're going to be working on. It's just not right now. So yeah. like we got, you could say we got more clarification that it is coming because we didn't really know that before. They had mentioned something about some type of Titanfall project yeah. coming, which I was trying to think was just going to be a mobile, so I wouldn't get my hopes up anyway. Uh, but that, I don't know if that was this, and like they're saying that's got delayed. I don't know. I just like I, I'm not, I'm not expecting too much right mm -hmm. now from it, just because like I understand how yeah. you know they've. They've got their people working on Apex, which I love Apex and I'm having a good time. And then they've had all these people working on Jedi Fallen Order also. And they clarified that it's two separate teams. So, like, they've got their resources uh, handled well. Um, but, yeah, it's it's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm patient. I'll eventually get my Titanfall and it'll be fine. So, that's fine. I also, also just want to say that <clears throat> Respawn did come out and like make, kind of make a statement about like their work practices and stuff and how with Apex, they're not trying to do weekly updates. They're not trying to do, you know, all this pushing stuff in because yeah. they want to respect their employees and, you know, not do the crunch that other studios are doing. And like, I, I'm, I'm good with that. I think that's really good of them because, you know, you want something to, be able to endure and last and not be burning through people so like a lot of people are not happy with like the apex battle pass in this first season that's going on because they don't think there's enough stuff but you know just like give them time and, and let it grow yeah. naturally so. we're, we're, we didn't have it put on the docket but uh there was a thing that came out about epic and like their employees there are employees who are working 100 hour weeks yeah. And like not being able to take a day off. And I say I think that led to the comment from Apex, yeah. like, hey, like we're not gonna do that to our employees. Like, yeah, like yeah. Fortnite can add a new fucking item every week, but like we're not gonna do that to our employees. So like yeah, yeah I think that's a very important thing, especially in like because we all know video games like crunch is a thing for developers and like mm -hmm. it's a very terrible thing and like it should be addressed and like so it's very good for Respawn to like kinda of get out in front of that. Um so yeah. Very yeah. good on them. Good Sucks about Timefall, but hey, you know, they're, but they hey, have... they're doing good stuff and they're building a foundation that yeah. can endure and grow. So, I mean, you know, yeah, you got to think about like Respawn is a company that wants to last, like, wants mm -hmm. to be around. Like, so they had to have different 10 ball things. Like, right now, yep. all they had was Titanfall before 
mm-hmm. Apex, and then now they have Titanfall, Apex, and Jedi Fallen Order, and like, yeah. they're going to have all these these games they're probably going to be working on, so, yeah, good on them. Yeah. All right. And then last bit of news for the day, we have uh, Sony, a few weeks ago, finally released some details about the PS5. It is a thing. Um, it's in early stages, uh, from what they're telling us. Um, and uh, is it Mark Cerny or Mike Cerny? I feel like it's Mark Cerny. I feel like it's Mark Cerny, but again, I'm not super not reliable. All right. So. We're going to say Mark Cerny um, did an interview with, I want to say, The Verge? I believe it was Wired. Wired. All right. I was close. Um, and by close, I mean, wasn't it at all. <laughs> uh, and he kind of showed off what the PS5 was all about. Um, a lot of cool details. Some things that really stuck out to me. Uh, backwards compatibility uh, for PS4. I was like, fuck yes, let's go. Um, that's that's one of the reasons why I'm like, I should just go ahead and get that Burnout Paradise remastered. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey. <laughs> we're um, on two systems now. <laughs> uh, the other big thing for me, personally, is the uh, inclusion of an SSD drive. Um, or just solid state drive, not SSD yeah. drive. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, like, it is something I think consoles have been needing for a while, and here we are. Um, and I did like how, like, he put his money where his mouth was with that and, like, showed off, like, how yeah. Spider Man loaded, like, in 30 seconds on a PS4 Pro. Oh. Or was it? No, it was, like, a minute, wasn't I it? it was, I, thought, I think it was only, like, 18 seconds. 18 seconds? I and was then I think it went down to less than a second less than a second on the yeah, ps5 like like, four seconds working yeah. thing um so those are the two big things that like really stuck out to me with this ps5 information mm-hmm. sam what really like stuck out to you i mean to be honest those were the two things that stuck out the most yeah, like those are well, like the two things you're like, like that's yes. that's that's cool now the ssd was like sounding real good to me because like i don't know that we've talked about this but like lately my ps4 has kind of been dragging yeah, like same i don't like it used to like be real zippy and like but now like just you know you'll be on like a game and you're like oh let me go start a party real quick and it'll take Ooh. a significant amount yeah. of time to get that party menu to come up or like to go to your friends list and it just like it never used to take that long and i mean i guess i feel like that's just something that happens with technology and computer type things it's just like they eventually kind of get clogged up i don't know why um so they announced the ps5 will be coming in the fall or the end of the year of 2020 and i'm like you know that's that's good that's that's great you don't want it to come too soon that's what she said but like I mean, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of ready for it. I'm like I don't, I don't know if this PS4 keeps like I like having some issues. Like I'm ready to just go ahead and make this stuff up and like get a little something better because yeah. I don't want it to keep getting worse. Like I don't know if I can if I have a year and a half of my PS4 like getting worse. I'm like because you don't want to buy another PS4 like yeah. right towards the end. So I don't know what's gonna happen, but but I'm excited for the PS5. They they talked about the backwards compatibility and they didn't specifically address this but i like they you better be able to have a party chat between ps4 and ps5 because if not that could be a big problem because like say i get a ps5 but like people i want to play with still have a ps4 and i feel like if you're playing the same games like you could have in-game chat that would probably work but yeah. I want my I want the party chat to work too. So hopefully that'll be addressed at some point and will be addressed to my liking that we can in fact do it. Um, but yeah, I don't know because like that'd be I don't know. I, I mean feel I feel like though they can work something out there. Yeah, um, there was yeah. a lot of other information about the PS5, but like that's all like that technical lingo that I don't really know a lot about. Well, so. the ray tracing sounded pretty cool because i'm gonna tell you i didn't know anything about ray tracing and then somebody a while back had posted a video in our discord and it was about battlefield 5 and explaining uh how ray tracing works and i still don't get it it's fine but the thing was like it would show the way reflections worked and so like it would show this explosion and it would show like this car by it and without ray tracing it was just there was an explosion over here and you kind of saw it and it's just like "Er." but then with the ray tracing like you saw like the shiny glow of the car and you would see how the fire is reflected and moves through the car 
uh, just in the reflection of it. And it, it did make it look really cool. So that's all I know about it is that it looked cool. And I think it would be nice to have it. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. everything that they like just basically revealed got me excited for PS5. And when they officially yeah. announced the PS5, probably later this year, like show off like games and stuff like that on it. Like I'm, I know I'm still at this point. Like they, yeah. they handled two things I am really interested in. So so yeah, it's just you know uh, exciting time, and like I'm sure Xbox is gonna start following suit real quick because. Okay, real quick though, can we just put on our tinfoil hats for a second? Right, here we go. Okay, so so they knew they were gonna be announcing this pretty soon. Mm-hmm. So what if on one of like the latest updates to our firmware on PS4, they've started in making us chug more, like making things slow down a little bit more what if they've been slowly conditioning us to make our ps4 perform less well so that we are more inclined to get the ps5 right that is some some evil stuff sam but But it's possible possible. they could be doing that that could be why it's slowing down Hmm. Hmm. yeah i mean yeah that'd be a thing um i'm not saying it's true i'm not saying it's true either it's just an idea on the flip what if Microsoft hacked into Sony's stuff is making our PlayStations go slower so that we play more Xbox? That is Two also a so, valid theory, but I just feel that one's less likely. Okay. Because I yeah, feel like... Yeah. I feel like... I don't know. And I, I like to think that Xbox... Are the good guys like they're really trying to make stuff good and like you know they've got the adaptive controller they're just trying to like they got their buddy buddy with nintendo they're doing some good stuff and like i feel like i don't want to think that they would do that whereas i'm fine thinking that sony would do that (laughs) yeah um it's gonna be interesting you know because like we're finally getting stuff for ps5 you know we know xbox is definitely working on something there's a new switch coming apparently later this year <laughs> there's so many later. rumors about these switch hardware yeah things. so many things about it's these switch like, things I don't and know. like i don't like the term console wars because like it's not a console war at this point like you yeah. like you're probably loyal to like either all of them or just one of them at this point um but like console watch 2019 Ooh. i'm here for it i'm, I'm excited I'm, i want to see everything so yeah yeah. Sam, anything else you want to talk about tonight? Um, just just like a spoiler alert warning. Next episode, I'm gonna be talking a lot about Nino Kuni too. Ooh, all right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll be looking forward to that. I'm, I'm interested to see what oh, you I'm think about that game. I'm looking forward to that. Oh my god, I oh, can't okay. wait to talk about it. I, right. I I feel like I'll be done with it by next week, so I'll Damn. be able to like give a full. Thing cool. about it. That's why I'm waiting. So yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this has been the Geek Card Games podcast. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, let us know your thoughts on the PS5 or on Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, you can reach to us at reach to us. You can reach to us at uh, contact at geekcardgames.com. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Geek Card Games. You can join our Discord server at geekcardgamescom slash Discord. You can find our merch store at geekcardgamescom slash shirts. We have that new knitting shirt up, and Sam added a color of a different shirt, uh, because someone politely asked for it. Um, you can find our YouTube videos at geekcardgamescom slash YouTube. You can find our Twitch channel, where we stream sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, at twitch.tv slash geekcardgames. If you'd be so kind, you can leave us a five-star review, a like, comment, or subscribe, and all the fun stuff you can do on every service, whatever service you use. Just, you know, let us know how, what you think of us. You think our breath smells? It's a little weird. You can't smell a uh, podcast host's breath, but it's good to know. Um, I'm forgetting anything, Sam. It's been, a, it's been a hot minute since I've done this. No, yeah. No, we're all, all good. Right. We're good. We're good. Well, once again, just remember, stop live tweeting. Just don't do it. Unless you're using hashtags. Sam, take it away. Oh, wait, no. Wait. I did <laughs> miss something. It's been a long time. <laughs> I... I'm at Comic with Cody on Twitter. Sam, where can people find you? I'm at SKSUVAK on Twitter. All right. Now, Sam, yeah. would you so politely take it away so we can end this show? <laughs> We're just two geeks who heart games. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Yeah, we did it.
I'm gonna go buy some of those Tums for uh, the movie tomorrow, just in case. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good idea to just like take yeah. a preventative one, just in yeah. case, you know. Well, so. I was like making the joke. I was like, my body is a temple tomorrow. Nothing gross is going. Like I'm eating a salad, and I'm not yeah. even putting like dressing on it. Like it's just gonna hold be- on. Let me just say this though. Like your body is also not used to changes, so like Shit, you right. really shouldn't do something out of the ordinary because that's more right. likely to upset it as well. You just want to like stay the course and do whatever it's used to, because like yeah. you know, don't introduce change. Yeah, good point. All right, before the three-hour movie. So yeah, do you On know the what I was side, I, have, mm. I think I'm going Saturday to see it again with my little oh, sister. So nice. hopefully, I'll be, hopefully I like. If I do have to get up and leave to like pee or something, I can at least time it to like where I only miss. I was just imagining going to see the movie tomorrow and I was like, what if there's a guy next to me and like, what if in the middle of the movie, he just like kind of like puts a jacket over his lap and like sticks a bottle down there and like he pees in a bottle in the middle of the movie. I'm like... How would I react to that? I feel like I would miss a lot of the movie because I would be very upset by what's happening and not knowing what to do. Yeah. Because, like, I am fearful, like, of people who are like that. Because, like, you can just see the movie again. Like, yeah. You're probably going to see the movie again. You don't need to take it that seriously. Like, if I have to pee tomorrow, like, I'm going to get up and pee. I'm not holding it for two hours straight. Well, I mean, three hours straight. Yeah, three hours straight. I'm just. Yeah. Really, it, you're used. Okay, realistically, we're used to a two and a half hour Avengers movie. Yeah, you know we can handle it. We're fine. Our bodies are are used to it. Thirty more minutes probably isn't going to make much of a difference. Yeah, that's what I'm telling myself. I'm also just not doing popcorn and drink because, like we no discussed, way. like Mm-mm. it's a fucking recipe for disaster. No, yeah, I never, like, I never do that. Because I did that for Hellboy. I ate popcorn and drank a Coke. And like, did you learn your lesson? Oh yeah, because like I like my brother was like, I can't do it, Cody. Like I gotta go. But like I was like, there's there's another end credit scene. Like I know what it is. Like it was bad. It was really bad. So yeah, no no popcorn and drink for Cody tomorrow. Um, Blue Girl was going tonight, and she cut off fluids ninety minutes before the movie. I was like, <laughs> damn, that's serious. So I don't know. We all have I'm our excited. methods. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be good. We'll probably cry a lot. So 